ladies and gentlemen, today we have a critique for you guys. And for those of you guys who are new here, this is the series where we take a look at your guys' artwork using the hashtag ABCrit. You can also submit over on my Facebook. I have a link to all my social media in the description down below. And you'll also find every single artist in today's video down there as well. To kick things off, I want to look at this form study right here, which is done by Silver. He's got some pretty dope work. I've seen his work in the past. He submitted in the past. Right off the bat, you did a great job on this. But I would say to include more values. Including more values would really help you to sculpt your forms more. You'd be able to have lighter lights and darker darks due to contrast. And everything in between. Think of it as you're giving yourself more tools to build with. Next up is include a cast shadow. Cast shadows are the unsung heroes of why things look three-dimensional. If it wasn't for cast shadows, everything in this world would look flat. So the second you put a cast shadow on here, the picture's gonna pop right off. And the last thing I want to point out is how you have a really light shadow area down here. In order for this to be that bright, you would have to have a very light surface underneath the ball. That way the light would bounce off that surface and hit the shadow area, lighting it up. But once again, that would have to be a very, very light area. And that's not really indicated here. This is just a typical form study. So I would say go ahead and include more shadows here, like a proper core shadow and all that. This way you can really sculpt that form, because as it stands right now, it looks very flat due to that reflective light being so intense. What you gotta understand is nothing in the shadow area will ever be as light as the light area. And that's what's happening here. So the value of this area right here competes with the value of this area, which you don't really want it to be that light. Now this right here, guys, I wanna do a video specifically on flow, because the things I wanna say about this piece are simply too long for this video. But let me just introduce you guys to two different methods of flowing something. Mind you, both of these methods do not need to be used in a single piece. You have number one, which is momentum flow, and then number two, which is letter and line uniformity and similarity, which sounds a little bit like a lot to take in, doesn't it? Letter and line uniformity and similarity is pretty simple. I want to do a whole video dedicated just on that, but the basic gist of it is letters are made out of lines before anything, right? So you take a look at two different letters and you look at them to see if they have similar lines. If they got similar lines, you put those lines close to one another and suddenly it flows. Now because lines make up letters, if you do that enough with lines, then the whole letter will flow. Simple as that. Now these lines, they can be similar, and that'll make them the flow, or they can be uniform, and that'll make them flow. So when we take a look at this, I'll show you guys an example of what would not flow, is this horizontal into this vertical. It doesn't flow. Why? Because they are not similar, they are not uniform. However, this horizontal line with this horizontal line does flow, because they're similar. This vertical part of the A and this vertical part of the chip, they do flow because they're similar. That's how he's flowing the V to the A, is you have uniform lines between the A and the V, and then similar lines between the A and the V as well. They, they flow because of that. Now, line uniformity and similarity is proximity-based, meaning if you have a vertical line on the left side of the A and then a vertical line all the way on the opposite side of your piece, those two lines will not flow because they're too far away unless you're able to link them together with multiple vertical lines throughout the entire piece, meaning the line on the way left and the line on the way right would flow because they are linked via more lines between them. Okay, so moving on to momentum flow, that's essentially when you take the suggested momentum of a piece and you flow it throughout letters, and I'll show you guys an example of that. This piece right here uses momentum flow. It also uses letter and line uniformity and similarity, but it uses momentum flow to a great degree. For example, you have this part of the G which flows over here and into the R and down. That's all momentum. It also flows from the G to the R to the I, and then the R flows into the I, and the I flows into the M. So the G, R, I, M all flow right into one another. The R and the I flow, the I and the M flow, and once again, the I and the M flow. All of this is momentum. That piece also uses letter and line uniformity and similarity, but that's an example of momentum flow. Now, letter uniformity and similarity is not proximity based. And what this means is you can have, say, this part of the A and this part of the O, they're similar. Those two flow. Simple as that. Simple as that. Real quick, Time Lord, can I just say that this is my favorite Joker, period. Like Heath Ledger, phenomenal Joker. Great, great, great work. I've always liked this style of cross-hatching. I personally have never been able to really do it to, to the way I like it, but I, I love it when you do it. I would recommend maybe using the markers in more of a circular motion as opposed to lines, because if your marker is dry and you're doing more circular motion, you'll end up preventing a lot of the streaks. You'll still get some occasionally, but you'll end up preventing a lot of these streaks that you see throughout the image. And it's a shame because this is a dope image, but those streaks definitely take their 
tall in this image. I would also say to maybe sculpt forms a little more. And really what I'm looking at is the nostril, the nose, and the teeth. Those are the main points that I'm talking about. You can really see it now that I pull up your other picture where you can see how the teeth need a lot of forms. But other than that, man, great work. I, I, I like... I like this. I like this a lot. These are pretty dope. I like these. I actually don't have anything to say about these. These are really well done. I, I like this a lot. I, I don't have much to say about this. I want to point out two things about this real fast. Number one, when you have a negative space like you have between his arm and his collarbone and the actual cup, and you fill all that in black, but you don't do that anywhere else on the piece, what ends up happening is this becomes a massive focal point, and that takes away from the rest of the image. If you wanted to put NAS on this piece, you could have simply used a lot less of this black and just written it somewhere. You would still have gotten the same effect by having the name there, and this would no longer be such a massive focal point. Also, what I want to note is how he's holding the cup. The cup has a form, it's a cylindrical object. You made that very clear with this right here, right, and the bottom. Well done. But the hand does not follow that form. The hand does not wrap around. As you can see, my hand makes that same cylindrical shape, right? His hand does not. His hand goes straight across, across like this, which it's impossible to hold something like that. It's simply, unless you use your thumb to pinch it, it's like this, which is not a natural way to hold something. I get that the fingers are bent on the, on the tips, but I want to focus more so in this area. That way he can better illustrate this part. Overall, never mentioned, your, your work is amazing. I, I'm a fan of your work. Ain't that something? This guy does not look like he's having a good time. I like this. This is, you know, who, who is texting me? I would say to start considering the volume that forms take up. If we consider the volume that form takes up, there'd be a little bit of an issue between his arm and the leg, because the leg clearly comes out and down, which would interfere with the depth of his arm. And the reason I say that is because this arm shows us kind of where he is in relation to the actual body itself, but due to the, how you sculpted the forms throughout the entire thing, mainly right here, his hip and legs would be a little further out than his arm would. Which brings us to this guy's arm and this guy's leg interfering with one another. So consider more how much volume each form has. Man, I, I love I love this guy's work. Slug Daddy, I am a f I, I love you. If I was signed in, I would follow you. I love, love, look at this, look at this. I have nothing bad to say about your work. This guy's buying literal coke in an alleyway. <laughs> oh man, what? What is this? What is this? Oh my god! Damn, that's dark. Fuck, jeez. Logan Paul would probably record that. Your your work, man. <laughs> I got nothing to say about it. It's 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 so good to look at. It's so beautiful in a, such a weird way. I love it. I love it. I got. <laughs> I love this guy. I got nothing for you, man. I'm sorry. Your, your work is great. Oh, look at that grim piece. Thank you very much. Um, I feel bad about giving critiques on people who do my name because I, I feel a little bit like a douche. I just want to sit back and appreciate it and, and say thank you, you know? I don't, I don't want to critique this, <laughs> but you put it in AB Crit. So I, I would say make all the letters the same size, practice 3D, because you would have 3D here on the M and down here, and you would not have so much 3D here in the G. Um, so practice those two things, and practice letter structures a little bit, because the G, although it's fine, and the R, although it's fine, the I is too small, gets hidden behind the, the R, which kind of diminishes letter structure a little bit, and the M's letter structure is incorrect, because boxes connect on vertices, and this does not connect on a vertice, nor does this. You did a good job on this one. This, this one's probably the best one, in my opinion. I like this one a lot. Moving on to Alex, I've, I've said it in a lot of critiques, but you, you have to learn how to walk before you can run. As it stands right now, Alex, you're trying to do a more stylized piece, and this is making graffiti a lot harder for you than it needs to be. Because you still don't understand letter structure, negative space management, letter name, weight, flow, and things of that sort. And by doing a stylized piece, you're giving yourself all of these things to worry about, all of these fundamentals to have to adjust for the style, and as a result, your fundamentals end up taking a hit. And you never want that. You never, never, never want that. It also makes it more difficult to focus on these fundamentals. So I recommend you do basic, basic, basic straight letters. Kind of like the ones in the last critique, those are what you have to do. Now the question becomes, why do I say this? So we take a look up here. This right there tells us that you have 3D going to a slight diagonal left. But then we carry that out to every other vertice, say right here, and the 3D extends far beyond that same angle. Meaning you would not have 3D all throughout here. It's also off down here over here and throughout the rest of the piece. And there's no way this could be drop shadow because drop shadow does not 
come directly from the letter. It doesn't generate from a vertice. Drop shadow occurs below the letter, which does not happen here. However, if we look at the skinny lines on the A and the S, and the V and the F, we can see that you have a drop shadow below those skinny lines. But that drop shadow goes right into the 3D, so is it drop shadow or is it 3D? If it's 3D, then why is it not meeting the form? And if it's drop shadow, how is it going into the 3D? It can't. So these are the reasons why I say you need to keep it simple, you have to practice the fundamentals, you gotta do basic straight letters. You're, you're trying to run before you can walk. Overall though, letter structures aren't too bad, you have a nice standard A, you have a nice standard V, the D gets a little stylized and the S gets a little stylized, and that messes a lot with your negative space management, your letter name weight, your letter positioning, and even letter structure. For example, your E going over your V so dramatically. Also, side note, it, this is impossible to be an E because the E extends further beneath. This is technically an F. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this going to bring us to end of today's video. If you'd like, join us in the comments down below. Critique some of these guys' artwork with us as well. Feel free to also drop some critiques over on Instagram. It's a community show. We're here to help each other get better. Simple as that. If you want to join our community, feel free to subscribe. We come out with weekly videos. And if you'd like to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and have some decent conversations, some good times, laughs, typically tell penis jokes all the time, you can join us over on Twitch. I stream over there five days a week. Not only that, but you can decorate your walls with some pizzazz, some funkiness, with the link in the description leads right to my store so you can get yourself some prints. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time, but until then, peace.